everybody likes a revolution. Uh, not a revolution politically, but we like revolutions in technology. We're on the advent of one right now. I am not being clickbaity. I'm not being, you know, I am maybe exaggerating with the terminology, but it is actually a revolution. What is it? This here is a tiny little product. It's a buy win mini SSD. Here's an SD card. Here's a mini SSD. They're very similar in size. What is it? Well, I picked up this product from One X Player. I have a review from this coming. I'm actually editing it right now. Uh, One X Player X1 Air. Uh, it's a three in one handheld device, like it's a little tablet y type thing, right? It has controllers that detach and detach, like a Legion Go kind of thing. Full review of that coming. What made this cool, despite the fact that it's cool, anyways, and it's, you know, Intel Lunar Lake, is that it has a slot here. It's the first consumer, mainline consumer electronic to employ mini SSD. It has an SD card slot as well. Where is it? There it is. So you can still use SD cards, but it has that right there. And the One X Player Apex that's coming out anytime now, honestly, uh, I think in like a week or two, also has it. So what is this? This is a mini SSD. It's not an SD card. It may look like an SD card. It is massively more performant. It is literally a mini SSD that's slightly, slightly, slightly larger than an SD card. This will give you Gen 3 NVMe speeds. Spoiler for the whole video, but we're gonna go through it here. I'm not gonna put a bunch of bar charts in that bullshit. I don't care about any of that. I'm gonna do it live. I've already tested it. I'm gonna show you guys how this is going to revolutionize products. This is going to be a revolution in how handheld and mobile computing is done. I mean, you're gonna find these things probably in phones. You're gonna find these things, hopefully, maybe in phones. You're gonna find these things in stuff like handheld cameras, video cameras. You're gonna find them in things like handheld devices, like handheld gaming devices, laptops. I wanna see these. I wanna see these everywhere. I want Bywin to spread these things everywhere because this is really impressive product. I've already tested it a little bit, but come along for the ride here. I'm gonna show you why this thing is actually a true revolution in technology, especially mobile computing technology. Okay, so I have a messy desk. I've been filming other videos, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to be showing you guys this kind of live. Uh, I've already tested it. I've already done my review of the One X Air here um, over the last few days, but I'm going to show you it just in a dedicated video here. Um, so this is it here. It comes in a caddy, right? Kind of like your, like your old SIM card type things, right? Pop that in. Your device does have to be off. It runs over like it's a PCI type device, so it has to be off. Otherwise, I don't think it'll be recognized. It might actually crash your system. Um, so that's the one thing. It's not hot pluggable. So you go like that, you pop it in. All right, close that up. Okay, so here we are, we're in, we're in. Let's go, just make this easier, I'm just gonna plug in this here. Isn't it nice to have a tablet-y type thing that can do that? Anyways, so we'll come in here, I'm just gonna show you. So uh, it pops up in Windows. I did have to format it like a normal you know, SSD. Uh, this is the internal SSD, here it is right here, BioWin Mini SSD. I've already done tests as you can see here, I've put lots of crap on it, games and stuff but let's do it again. Let's do it again right now. So uh, it will pop up, like I said, it will pop up in the BIOS, like a PCI. So you're gonna be able to boot right off of this thing because it shows up essentially as an NVMe. So BIOS will just basically recognize it like that. So you can have no problems, you know, booting off of this, booting Windows, booting Linux or whatever it is off of this, no problems because it's recognized just as a standard drive, right? If you come in here, when you first put it in, it'll pop up. You won't get anything. You come in here uh, and then you go into your, you know, disk partition and you format it, uh, drives, oops, drives, SATA and NVMe, no SATA, it's recognized as an NVMe, there's the included SSD that came with the device, there's the BIWIN there, uh, we can see here all the different specs that it has, HMB is what it's using instead of DRAM, 64 megabytes of HMB, which is cache basically. Now I've already tested this thing in terms of writes and I think you'll be pretty impressed, but uh, spoiler there for the video, come down, 40, apparently I've been running it for 40 hours. Unsafe shutdowns. I think I just powered it off. <laughs> I clearly have written, I've already done some of these tests, right? So uh, yeah, the warning temperature threshold's 94. It'll implode at 96. Uh, it actually was, just, it just doesn't get that hot. So again, more spoilers. Okay, so let's come in here. We're just gonna run this thing just so it can be, you know, kind of hanging out here while we do stuff here. Again, it is relatively filled up here. There's some Steam games on it, so right? It's about half full or so. Uh, I've actually done a ton of tests on Discord to kind of show, and I did it when I first got it, like that night, and people on the One X Player, some of the mods and that, and other people were hanging out, and we were already doing the tests to just kind of see what it could do. So we're idling here. Let's see. It runs a little warm because it's a tiny little thing. So, you know, 47. It's not a problem. It just hangs out around there. No problem. Okay, so let's start this test here. Uh, we're going to come in here, and we're going to just go right back to scratch because I've already run all these tests. 
Okay, so here is us chatting on uh, the basically the 1x. We'll do it with some of the slide, but I just want to bring this up just real quick. So I'll show you guys. So this was the idle temperature, as we've already shown here. You know, it's about 50 to 55. I was kind of dicking around with it, but it kind of hangs out there. It's fine. Tiny little card and a big thing. Uh, this is under full writes, like heavy writes. You can see those temperatures. We're looking at, uh, you know, 70, 75, 78, 80, whatever. Again, not, not throttling. Here was me doing a crystal benchmark test. You can see the temperatures there. We'll do it again in this video, of course, as I just said. Speeds. Full speed here, fully written. Gen 3, upper tier Gen 3 drives. Fantastic. Temperature drop, like a few seconds, basically, after running that. You can see it drops way back down, nice and cool. Temperatures under right, you can see here, this is the first right here, ran through. We were getting about a consistent 1.63 gigabytes of transfer speed. That's, a, that's good, that's good, that's consistent, that's what you want to see. That's as fast as these can go, like even an NVMe, like that's it does, internal to internal, that's basically when you get with real world file transfers. These are video files, so that's basically where you're going to get here. No problems whatsoever. Now, when you're actually installing a Steam game, there's no problems. Uh, this is immediately right afterwards, I started to install a Steam game. We actually had very good network speeds. Like I ended up with uh, almost like my gig, I have gigabit ethernet, uh, and it got pretty close to that because it was done at night, like 10.30 PM or whatever, it was done at night. Uh, so it was writing really fast. Disk usage, 1.2 gigabytes. And you can see there we're writing through, no problems. And you know it's running nice and cool. You can see here, 60, 61 very good temperatures and the other thing is the cache is not running out it can't really be it can't really be depleted running you know steam so if you're actually installing games like installing steam games for downloading them you'll never run out of cache it'll just write until it's done <laughs> no problems whatsoever now if we move some real like games that those are video files which is probably not common for a handheld it doesn't make sense for like a handheld type thing but i can see these type of devices being used in laptops and other you know portables small type things so i mean there is i guess scenarios where you're like yeah i'm gonna dump 100 gigabytes of like super fast transferring files like video files in one go like you have a mini pc or you have i don't know a laptop maybe they start putting things in laptops i mean maybe it's a pretty niche use like what i just did there but it's possible now if we move something like marvel spider-man here um it's going to be fast but it'll never maintain that speed because there's small files like it's going to the whole time it's going to be doing weird, weird, weird. it might even drop down to you know like tiny little speeds here because some of the files will be smaller like if you come into you know a game like this there'll be some big files and some small small files this is a hundred gigabyte uh hundred gigabyte video game here right by the way i just i just did this as well you can check the time stamp if you want uh normally it takes time for like cache dram cache or hmb to like re regenerate itself i didn't really give it time i gave it like 30 seconds because i just ended up responding to a text message uh is it going to run out right now we're on this again this you saw that that was about 100 gigabytes is that what it was 100 gigabytes approximately 107 gigabyte game I don't think it's going to finish because in theory, when I did the video files, it ran out at about 80 or 90 gigabytes. So in theory, I'm going to see the drop out here, but maybe not. Maybe not. Am I wrong? Have I been proven wrong? Oh, okay, maybe I've been proven wrong. So there you go. That's 100. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm smart sometimes, guys. Sometimes I'm smart. Not always. It was almost exactly where my cursor was. So that's a 105 gigabyte game. 107 gigabyte game, and I wrote about 80 or 90 percent of that. So you are able to write about about 90 gigabytes in one shot. So if you're trying to move a game to this thing, uh, games are these days. I mean, you're looking at 50 to 100 gigabytes for most games. I mean, there's some that are bigger, but it's still like the cache will still recover. Let's take a minute, right? So you can take most. There it goes. So you can take most games that are out on the market and just dump them, dump them in here. I mean, this is a this is a 512 gigabyte capacity, or and like real world after you actually get the proper Windows formatting in that, uh, 476. So you can only put four of these games on here, anyways. Total, like that's all it'll hold, right? Uh, this is real world NVMe, real world NVMe. Look at these temperatures over here. What did we say it was? 97 before it'll shut down. 94 was the warning. Now it's not as hot. It's not as cool as you know a big massive Gen 3 cool low power NVMe under a heat plate. Uh, under, a, under a heat sink, that kind of thing. It's not going to be like that. But it's very good, right? This is a tiny little card. Look at these speeds. Look at these speeds, 
right? That's real world. We're doing this live, right? I just went over the first part to kind of chat about it. We're doing this live. Crystal Dismark Synthetics, just to prove my point that I didn't fabricate Discord posts. Um, it's that one. Uh, I mean, theoretically, we should wait for the cache to run out. So let's just take a second here. Okay, what has it been, like a minute? I don't know, let's just do it. Um, yeah, normally you'd want to let the D, the uh, HMB cache rerun. But uh, yeah, we'll see here. Okay, so that's the reads, no problems. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, we're just gonna output to an external monitor. Just, you know, just feel like it. It's a little easier to see. I'm just gonna play Spider-Man for a second here. You guys don't have to watch. This is like massively upscale because I'm on a 4K screen. So just don't worry about looking like crap. Uh, IGPU plus Spider-Man at 4K, not good. Not good. Uh, the reason I'm playing Spider-Man for one thing is uh, loading, right? We're loading in new sectors, potentially. We're loading in new sectors, new areas. Uh, there's a lot moving. We're moving fast. We're going from area to area. And there's a potential that we are, I should probably actually play the game. There's a potential that we are, you know, really blasting the SSD here by getting it to write in new sectors, that kind of stuff here. Okay. Let's go like that. We're gonna kick out here. And let's check the temperatures here. By when, look at that, 64, 64, 61 under load. It was idling at about 44, 43. And that's consistent when, when I was installing Steam games too. It just doesn't get hot. The only time it ever gets like warm, warm is when you're doing massive, fi oops, when you're doing massive file transfers. And I mean, that's not normal. I mean, it will eventually be a scenario that you might be getting into where you're doing, you know, massive file transfers and that kind of stuff on, you know, a device like this, a laptop, that kind of thing. But, I mean, most of the time, this is going to be a gaming handheld. It's going to be used as a little hard drive inside, and it's never going to have that issue. So that's the video here. We're at a paradigm shift. This is what I'm going to term. I'm going to use a paradigm shift. Why do I say that? Because we have something new. I mean, we've been going years and years and years. There hasn't been anything new, really new, in you know technology in general for a while. There's just been like iterative stuff. I mean, in gaming, there was like you know upscaling. That was probably the biggest thing. That's been out for quite some time now. Before that, I mean, what did we get, right? Like frame generation and upscaling, that's really it. We haven't seen much of that. In terms of like consumer electronics, honestly, not much. Like, yeah, slightly better iGPUs and like slightly better this and slightly better that. And it's just an iterative process. This is the first actual paradigm shift where we have something new. We're going from, you know, SD cards that are not fast at all. They're not fast at all. They're terrible in most regards, but they're good for like, you know, cameras, very basic stuff. They get the job done, but they've been around forever and it's old technology. Yeah, we have micro SD card express, like the Nintendo Switch there, and it's faster. It's still the same type of technology. And yeah, you get 500 megabytes a second. Woo. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, that's kind of the base for what you would want to do anything with nowadays, like SATA based speeds, 500 megabytes a second. That's the absolute base you'd want to go with. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're going to start to notice things even like operating systems slow down games for sure this is the first paradigm shift where we have something very very interesting we have something that is approximately the size of an sd card like you know a little bigger but approximately the size of an sd card there but massively 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 more performant and i'm going to tell you this thing massively again i'm using it massively exceeded my expectations my expectations were to go into this thing and kind of dunk on it and be like, it runs too hot, it throttles like crazy, the cache runs out, it's not a viable solution, it's not good, but clearly, Bywin has something that they're confident with. 1X, as a company, 1X Player, 1X Netbook, whatever, they were like, all right, let's get into this technology. Let's get into this technology while it's new and fascinating and interesting. They're going to be the first ones in, and they are, uh, and I'm going to be the first one to cover it because that's what I do, and it's fantastic. This is what I want to see going forward. We have two handhelds. We have the uh, 1X Fly... Uh, 1X Air right there. We have the Apex coming out from 1X Player. And I'm sure there'll be other companies that are going to come out with this uh, support for these devices here. But these are really, really sick. Really, really sick. Uh, this one I got from, you know, with the handheld from uh, 1X Player. Uh, you can buy these. They're hard to find. Uh, but there's a website. I can put a website down below. I have no affiliate with them. But sure, I'll promote them if they're going to sell it. Um, there you go. That's the device there, the uh, mini SSD from Bywin. This is a 512 gigabyte model. 
Uh, it's fascinating. Look at all those little interface pieces there. It's really cool stuff. So um, yeah, it's a paradigm shift. We're in a paradigm shift now. We have something new and interesting. I'm, I love to see it. I'm going to be covering this type of stuff going forward. Whenever I can get my hands on something to you know test this with, I'm going to show it because I think this is an important piece of technology where we're getting something new coming out that's interesting and fascinating.